So much has occurred, has changed in Over the Rhine in the last 10 years, but one of the big things is the overall quality of life. It's becoming a place where people want to live and work, which is exactly the vision Lori Quinlivan talked about in her award-winning documentary, Visions of Vine Street. If the violence was a wake-up call, Visions of Vine Street forced Cincinnati to examine its past, present, and future. The question is, will developers finally tackle Vine Street? The I-Team's Lori Quinlivan produced and reported Visions of Vine Street, which aired eight months after the riots. Charlie Lucan made, one month later, made Vine Street his number one priority. Mm -hmm. And that sort of like put everyone on notice. Today, she's a city council member who takes pride in Vine Street and the transformation her documentary helped create. She remembers Vine Street then and now. When you stand here now, 10 years later, what do you see? What has changed dramatically? I see beautiful historic buildings restored. I see a lovely streetscape with nice sidewalks and trees and lights. And I see activity, life, you know, new restaurants. And I know people who live in these buildings. Um, it's great. I mean, it's a neighborhood that's coming back to life. D. Lynn Myers, who Quinlivan interviewed 10 years ago, has watched the neighborhood come back to life. The producing artistic director of the Ensemble Theater remembers the first night of violence. I was walking back from a project we were working on down at the Wise Temple, and it was a really amazing to feel the temperature of the neighborhood change at the closer you got back to our doors. Mm -hmm. Was it frightening? It was frightening, and it was really a storm was brewing at the same time. Mm -hmm. The sky was getting really dark and cloudy, and you could just feel it. You could, you could feel in the air that something was going to explode. Today, with a new play opening, Myers says attendance has grown dramatically, partly because of improved safety. When we came down here to shoot that story, it was a little scary. Yeah. And uh, we were scared sometimes mm -hmm. being here. But crime, violent crime in this neighborhood and in the Central Business District is down about 50% since it was in 2005. Mm -hmm. It's a much safer place to be. Unfortunately, some people who live in the suburbs still don't believe it because they haven't been here in five years. <laughs> right. Right. In Visions of Vine Street, Quinn Livin suggested street improvements. Now she can point to the difference they make. With some help from city money is as they redid these buildings, they buried the power lines and so there's no overhead wires crisscrossing everywhere anymore. They redid the sidewalks so you can see it looks good now. Um, they put new trees in, there's some trees, so just simple things like that, but it makes a world of difference. An artworks mural of Jim Tarbell presides over Vine Street and Central now. Ten years ago, he guided Quinlivan through the history and architecture of Over the Rhine. We have the largest collection of Italianate architecture. Most of the architecture that you see in Over the Rhine, the, the elaborate cornices and the window trim, the bay windows. Since then, the Cincinnati Center City Development Corporation, 3CDC, has worked to revitalize the neighborhood while preserving historic structures. How good of a job has 3CDC done? They've done a great job. Mm -hmm. They have just come in here strategically, took the corner buildings first where we had the worst problems, got them under control, found people who have the desire to renovate these buildings, and they've done it block by block by block by block. Quinn Levin says when 3CDC bought up the corner buildings, that solved a lot of problems because that was where drug dealers and users hung out. So what do we have here? So we have a Tavola, uh -huh. brand new restaurant with a group of young guys. Uh -huh. We have the Senate, which is already doing so well uh -huh. that they're going to expand and do a Mediterranean restaurant right next That's door. Well. So yeah. three restaurants right there. So we checked out the new restaurant in progress. Bill Drasnick, who's moving here from Mount Lookout, says he and his partners hope to open a tavola in April. And what um, kind of food are you going to have? Oh, uh, wood fire pizza, um, small plates, salads. So this is the kitchen. It'll, it'll remain completely open. There will be seating all along here, seating along the wall, and you'll be able to kind of just hang out, talk with the, you know, the chefs as they're cooking. 
Um, and this is the, the oven that was imported from Naples. Restaurants like this become part of the fabric and the attraction of the community. All the new restaurants and development, what do they mean for your theater? It's a great, great impact for us. For us, it used to be that you really had to love ETC and want to go see a play to come to 12th and Vine. Now, you can love ETC and you can also have a drink beforehand and dessert afterwards and you can shop. And that, to me, makes for a better community. So what does Quinn Livin envision now? She's thinking about this city's image as we prepare to welcome visitors to the World Choir Games and the new casino. The German heritage and uh, the excellence in the arts mm -hmm. and everything that we have start down here. Yeah. And I think that should be part of the story we tell to the rest of the world. We should note that some people in Over the Rhine, including some longtime residents, don't agree with the approach being taken by developers, especially the largest group, 3CDC. Over the Rhine is approximately 0.67 square miles. There are, by some estimates, 500 vacant buildings. There are entire blocks that are vacant. And multiple entities could develop luxury condominiums, luxury apartments from now to years to come and never displace one single person. And so they trumpet on their websites and in newspaper articles that they are inclusive and they are creating mixed income housing, but they're not. Springs Group, the Greater Cincinnati Coalition for the Homeless, protested the developer's latest project at Washington Park last month. Springs says his group often gets accused of being against development, but he says they are not. He says the city needs to hold developers accountable by tracking low-income housing to make sure developers live up to the promises to keep it in their plans. You can join the conversation on our special section, WCPO.com, slash 10 years later. It's amazing to see some of those changes, though. It is. Yes, it, it is. is.